Jobs. Russia will have to sacrifice air bases and ports. Ukraine has developed 15 types of long-range attack drones and threw them against the Russian oil industry. According to Forbes, during the year of such raids, Ukrainian intelligence reduced the capacity of Russian oil refineries by about 12%. According to the publication, Kyiv expects that oil raids will undermine Moscow's finances, complicate military logistics and sow discontent among ordinary Russians. However, experts warn that such strikes, although painful for the Russian Federation and effects on logistics, do not have a significant impact on the total annual production volume. Perhaps, more importantly for the Ukrainian forces, the drone attacks could force the Kremlin to pull precious air defense systems from the front line and redeploy them around oil infrastructure, the newspaper writes. Forbes notes that desperately trying to strengthen its air defense, Moscow recently postponed from 2024 to 2026 the export of two batteries of S-400 anti-aircraft missile systems in New Delhi and, according to British intelligence, plans are already being developed to deploy the Pantsir air defense system around energy facilities. By strengthening the protection of oil refineries, the Russians can agree to less protection around air bases, ports, headquarters and other military facilities, which will make them an easier target, Forbes writes. Russia disperses and thins its best air defenses, and the consequences of this are demonstrated by the Ukrainian missile attack on the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol, as a result of which two landing ships of the Russian Federation were damaged. For the Kremlin, a choice might be imminent, protect refineries or protect frontline forces. It might be impossible to do both, Forbes noted. Ukraine announced new landings of Ukrainian military personnel in Crimea. The head of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirillo Budinov, has announced new operations by the Ukrainian military in the temporarily occupied Crimea. In response to the journalists' question about whether there are any new landings being prepared in Crimea, Budinov replied affirmatively, yes, they are being prepared, and they will happen. Soon it will be warm, so we will continue. Crimea will be returned, emphasized the head of the main directorate of intelligence. Budinov stated that Russian occupiers do not abandon plans to once again seize the Ukrainian Zeminyi island, regularly launching missile and bomb attacks. They regularly carry out missile and bomb strikes. There has been information several times and we have seen its confirmation about conducting a similar operation as we once did. Budanov said, however, according to him, it is impossible to do so. But they couldn't do it because knocking out the garrison from the island is already unrealistic, emphasize the head of the main directorate of intelligence. The main directorate of intelligence fighters conducted several ground operations in the temporarily occupied Crimea. For example, on August the 24th, 2023, reconnaissance troops managed to carry out a sortie near the settlement of Mayak on the Tarkankut Cape. A battle took place within the framework of the main Directorate of Intelligence special operation involving naval assets and aviation. In turn, Russian sources began to invent their own version of the so-called Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups allegedly destroyed. In reality, at least 30 occupiers were destroyed and four high-speed boats were damaged as part of the special operation. Furthermore, on October the 4th, Ukrainian special forces again landed in the occupied Crimea and inflicted a fiery defeat on the Russian occupiers. It is noted that a fierce battle took place as part of this operation, resulting in significant losses among Russian soldiers. Oh, so true. Oh, so true. Oh, so true. Oh, so true.